Hey folks, Dayhager from the Six here. Just following up on the walkthrough of our Safari Condo R1723, we thought that we would just answer a few of the questions that we had in the comments via video. So we're going to take you through a few of the things that we didn't cover in the walkthrough about the trailer, and we'll talk about the elephant in the room, which is the high price, which we definitely saw a lot of comments on. So here we go. So one of the most common questions we've had is, are there curtains to cover all the windows? How do the curtains work? And so on. So I'm going to demo it now and cue the fast forward. Okay, I'm going to show you how the windows work. So uh, to get at the back one, we're going to move this out of the way. Um, so the screen is actually Velcroed onto the back wall. So to get at the window controls, you need to just pull that screen out a little bit, not all the way. And so it's got these two uh, catches. Actually, there's four. And then the window just tips out and wherever you want it to stay, then that's where you do up these struts, just twist struts. And then you would just put the, uh, put the screen back in place to keep the bugs out. So that's the back window. Um, so these are sliders here on the sides. And so you can open them as much or as little as you want. So typically if we just want to crack a window for condensation humidity purposes, we'll crack this one um, and you know it would just be open like a crack kind of like that so the door is your classic screen door window so you just pull the two little tabs and uh, it's got about three or four different positions so we had lots of questions about our storage in the washroom so we thought of showing you so we have these shelves which i absolutely love um, we keep our curtain for the door and for the fantastic fan. We also keep our towels, which as you can see, they're very compact and they're awesome, which we'll talk to you about later. And we keep our toiletries, some Kleenex, some toilet paper, and we have the cover for the toilet when we take shower. At the bottom, we just keep the chemical for the toilet and so pretty compact, but it fits a lot. And on the side, we have these hooks where we can hang anything we need to dry. Hey everybody, we interrupt this video for a quick RV tip. We've been RVing now for about five years and you know we've learned a few things along the way that uh, if you're new to RVing or maybe even if you just haven't found them yet, uh, would be very helpful for you. So today we're gonna talk about a couple of very small inexpensive items that make showering when you're out on an RV trip a lot more enjoyable. And Delil is gonna talk about the first one, which is these wonderful towels. Yeah, so these is shout out to our friends, Sandra and Mike, who introduced us to these towels. These are microfiber. Um, they are very light, very compact, and they dry really fast. At first, they will feel a little weird on your skin. It is something that you, you have to get used to, but uh, the fact that they are so light and, and they dry so fast, it's a big, big plus. Um, if you take your cotton towels, they do tend to 
take longer to dry, uh, they occupy a lot more space, and these dry really fast. And uh, in terms of scent, of smell, uh, these can be used for a, a lot longer without any scent whatsoever. The cotton, they tend to, after a few times, a couple of times, they start to smell. They're dry, you know, harder to dry. And these, even inside of your RV, they will dry really quick. Um, they also come with small hand towels. So, you know, very handy to have. And uh, again, very light and very compact. So you can put them anywhere in your RV. Uh, they're great for RV camping and for tent camping. So we really recommend these because um, we really, really like them. It's a, it's a great, great choice. So along with the towels, another thing in the shower that's made a big difference for us is these slides. So obviously you don't want to go barefoot in what's essentially a public shower because we're using campground showers. Our RV has small tanks and even if you have an RV with a big tank, I mean we've rented the 30 footers with the huge tanks and still found you couldn't get very many showers out of them. So um, you're going to be using campground showers. So you're going to want to have something on your feet. So these are, you know, you can use flip-flops for sure and they'll get the job done, but these are a lot better. So as you can see they have holes all around and they're sort of shaped to funnel the water out through the holes. And basically what it means is that by the time you get back to your trailer from the showers, your feet are completely dry. And I found with the flip-flops, my yeah. feet would just, like it was almost impossible to get them dry without almost towel drying the flip-flops themselves. And, you know, I, I don't know. I don't like kind of trying to dry my feet off while I'm standing up in a public shower. I would rather just walk out, let them dry on their own. And then when I get back to the trailer, I can put on my socks. So these make a big difference for me anyways I really enjoy the whole showering experience while I'm out on an RV trip a lot more with these uh, they're not very expensive so we are going to leave links in the descriptions to both the towels and these slides and we highly recommend them it's a little thing but it makes yeah. a big difference in your showering experience so we had a lot of questions about interior height so we thought we would just show you I'm six feet tall I'm exactly six feet tall maybe a touch more with the slides that I'm wearing right now and you can see right here, I don't know, maybe six inches of room. Uh, so it's, and then when I get into the middle, it's probably pretty close to a foot. It's about seven feet tall at this stage of the trailer. Um, and now as I move back, it does start to get shorter. So we're going to switch spots and then we'll show you that. Part. So we switch sides. Um, you can see tons of space, like pretty much a foot. Now, as I back up, it is going to get closer and eventually, so right here is about six feet and then it's going to fall off from there. But this isn't typically a place that you need to stand. So if I want to get changed, uh, if I want to work in the kitchen, you know, I'm never having to squat. And I think at this point here, you'd have to be a, close to seven feet tall before you'd actually be hitting the ceiling. So this is a very popular trailer amongst tall people. Um, another big selling point for me, this, this might actually be the one that landed us in this trailer, is for a small camper, usually if when you're getting into a wet bath, um, a tall guy like me is going to be crouched down. But I can actually stand up. And so you can see when I'm taking a shower, I mean, I can hold it over my head, standing up completely straight. And that's definitely a very handy uh, thing. Very, very difficult thing to find, even in some of the bigger camper trailers, never mind a little tiny one like this. So under the cushions we have our main storage compartments. We can get at them either by the sliding doors, front or back, or through the top, it has a rester. And here is where, on this side is where we keep our clothing. We have these awesome, amazing uh, wardrobe containers from Ikea. And they're made of uh, polyester. The sides are hard, the bottom is hard, and we keep, it's unbelievable the amount of clothing that we can fit in one of these. One is for us, the other one we use for the kids. And if it's just the two of us, one, you know, is plenty. Um, and then we keep also our bedding like comforters and pillows under here. Um, on this side, we, well, we now have our mirrors for the car, but we also have a toolbox that we always bring with us. You just never know when you're going to need your tools. 
Um, on this side, we also like to keep a laundry bag. So it has plenty of room for that, even for a backpack if we have to. So on this side, right now we have our microwave, but for our trip out west last year, uh, we basically used this space to carry um, extra packaged foods that didn't fit in the pantry area. We had uh, board games and our bedding, like comforters and pillows went in here. So lots of space. Basically what we have when the sleeping area is set up is a almost full king bed but the bathroom does encroach on this side. So, and you can see that this cushion is cut so that the bathroom door still functions. So you're not getting the full length um, other than on this part here. So I'm gonna lie down just to show you. Um, so it's six feet. So I'm putting my feet kind of up against the counter. I probably got another three or four inches, I would say. Um, now, when we actually sleep, though, I sleep in the middle. I don't mind if my feet hang off the bed a little bit. So this is typically how I am. And then Delilah sleeps right here. And this part of the bed, we don't use at all. Um, you know, it's a big bed. We just don't need all this space. Uh, what we typically do here is we'll lay out our clothes for the next day. So we'll just have four neat little piles of clothes. So when everybody gets up, we can just get dressed really quickly. So... Um, the other thing though that I'll say is that, you know, it's just really comfortable to sleep here. So I sleep awesome. I probably sleep better here than I do at, in the home bed. Um, now, one thing we did, we actually added some memory foam on top of the, the mattress. So, and we actually put vinyl on top of all of the trailer. So because we were eating so much in here and we found we were spilling food and so on, um, so I'm going to show you what the actual upholstery looks like from the factory. Just open up this guy a little bit. So it's a really nice blue fabric, um, you know, really nice. So we went with this gray, honestly, because it was inexpensive. <laughs> um, but you know, it's saving the upholstery for maybe when it just becomes a couple's unit uh, after the kids are both in university. And uh, then we might uh, get rid of the vinyl. Um, so, but these ones have memory foam on top of them. Uh, we, it's not that we didn't want to do it for the kids, but the kids said they didn't need it. So the kids cushions don't have the memory foam. But for me, this memory foam made a huge difference. You can actually get the memory foam from the factory too. So I would recommend that uh, so that you don't have to kind of redo it like we did. Um, so this is just kind of our homemade uh, job, but I think we did a really good job and it basically means we can spill anything in the trailer and we don't have to worry about cleaning it up. It's just wipe it off with a paper towel, basically. So from the comments on the walkthrough, I guess we need to address the elephant in the room, which is price. <laughs> this trailer now lists for 55,000 Canadian, which is around 41 US. And you'd probably be looking at around 60 Canadian with all of the options that we have. Uh, or maybe around 46, 45, 46 um, in US dollars. I agree, like the pricing of RVs has gotten kind of crazy. But having said that, we still thought that it made sense. And when we started this process, my thought was really probably a tent, like a pop-up camper. And so how did we go from maybe a $15,000 pop-up to a uh, 42, well, $46,000, I guess, with options trailer? Um, so there's a few things that we need to talk about. So the first one is depreciation. Because of the price increases and because there's a three or two to three year waiting list from the factory to get one, um, the used market is very, very solid on these. Um, and so the odds are that we would be able to sell it for at the worst case scenario what we paid for it and possibly even for more than what we paid for it. So that makes the high entry price a little bit easier to swallow. But that's not the only reason why I think the price makes sense. So, you know, and I've had a lot of people make comments like, oh, you know, this trailer would be better or that trailer would be better. But I think the key thing that we had to deal with in our search was um, we're trying to sleep somebody in the main bed who's six feet tall and then somebody in a bunk bed who's six foot three. And... This was really one of the only trailers I could find where the bunk would accommodate my six foot three son. 
you know, we wanted to have an RV as well where the kids each had their own bed. And this was one of the few trailers that we could find that would fit the bill. The other big thing, though, is weight. So, as I said in the walkthrough, this is a fully featured RV. We've got a toilet, we've got a black tank, we've got a gray tank, we've got a freshwater tank, we've got a shower. It's, it's a wet bath, but it's a shower. Um, we do have a kitchen on board. Uh, and, you know, and we have the four big beds that we were looking for. And the trailer weighs 2,000 pounds. And the tongue weight is probably, you know, when we're traveling around 350 pounds, maybe. And that's including with the extra propane tank and the bikes on the bike rack and so on. Now, our car is a Toyota Venza. And its tow capacity is 3,500 pounds. And its uh, tongue weight capacity is 350 pounds. Now, the hitch that's on the car is capable of 400 pounds of tongue weight because with weight distribution. Um, so I, and, and I want to be wi within that. I don't want to be at it. I want to actually be under it. And so really this trailer was one of the few trailers that, that met that tongue weight requirement. Um, now, so, and that brings me to kind of my point, which is if you live in the city and you've got a car that has some tow capacity, like 3,500 pounds, um, this, you know, this trailer makes a lot of sense because compared to the alternative, which would be to maybe buy a Ford Ranger or a Chevy Colorado or something along those lines, or maybe a Dodge Durango or a bigger SUV. Um, and, you know, with the pandemic, the price of those things went through the roof, even used. Um, and, you know, so you'd be looking in Canada here for any of those vehicles somewhere in the neighborhood of fifty to $75,000. Um, for the vehicle. So now, you know, raising your ceiling on the trailer starts to make a little bit more sense. Now, if you own a pickup already, I, I agree, this is maybe not your best value option because you can start to look at trailers that weigh, you know, 4,000, 5,000 pounds. You can do a tongue weight of six or 700 pounds or more potentially. Um, but you already own the truck, so you're not spending that $70,000 to get that tow capacity. So when you're in the car towing arena, there's really not a whole lot of trailers that will fit under that 350 pound um, tongue weight. So I, I really like the micro minis, and I'm a big fan of Traveling Robert. If you haven't checked out his channel, check out his channel. It's awesome. Um, but... The, and, and, you know, the weights on some of the smaller ones could work, but we wouldn't have the same sleeping arrangements that we have in this one. And the tongue weight is a problem. So even though the trailer total weight is okay, the tongue weight is going to put me way over on my vehicle capability and also on my payload capability for the car. So um, there's really only a couple of trailers out there that I'm aware of that really fit the bill. So there's a trailer called uh, Rove Light, um, which just came out recently, actually. It wasn't out when we bought this trailer, uh, but that one looks like it could fit the bill. Um, possibly a Casita could just squeeze under, but it would be very, very tight on the tongue weight situation. Um, you know, but there's, there's just not a lot of options out there for folks with cars that want an actual hard-sided travel trailer. And... This being hard-sided was another big advantage. So if we'd gone with the tent trailer route, um, there are certain campgrounds out in Alberta that they won't let you camp in with a tent trailer. Um, they want you to have hard-sided because there's so many bears in the area. So, you know, that gave us the ability to camp in those campgrounds as well. So I 100% agree that the pricing in this industry has gotten out of control. But... If, if you're able, like we were, to, to buy something like this, knowing that you have the resale value and knowing that you're not upgrading your vehicle, and that's saving us a ton of gas even when we're not towing. And if I can, if I can add one more thing, it was storage, because having a small trail like this, we, would, we were able to store it just in our driveway. So yep. yeah, without so, having to look for extra cost to store it. So, so we're sitting in our driveway right now, uh, in Toronto, um, you know, we have sort of a house that was built in the 50s or the 60s, so it has the garage at the back and a very narrow driveway to get to the garage. And, you know, so we needed something that was narrow, and this trailer just fits 
yeah. we're talking like three or four inches on e either side as but we're going by the house. <laughs> but it fits and we can get it in. But I got to say too, it is, it's cool. So we yeah. like the fact we like that we love the roof yeah. design. We love all the glass. Um, camping in Banff at Tunnel Mountain and just being able to see Mount Rundle all the time when you're inside of the trailer was really, really cool. And, uh, you know, it, it, it's just, it's got a different kind of feel to it. It's almost like we're still in the tent, even though, you know, we're not. Big shout out to everybody who watched the trailer walkthrough video. We can't believe it's getting close to 200,000 yes. already. And, you know, to the 500 or so new subscribers, thank, thank, you. You, thank you, thank you. We got lots of exciting stuff coming up. Uh, we got a big camping trip, actually two big camping trips planned yep. this summer. Yes. So we're going to show you some really awesome campsites. Uh, we're going to show you some really awesome hikes. We're going to do some kayaking. We've got some great footage from the trip to Algonquin Park that we're going to put on the channel as well. Um, and anyway, yes, please hit like and subscribe. Thank you for sticking with this long video. And uh, Day Hiker from the Six out.